We're going to take a look at using the TLC7 automatic artifacting version today. When you gather the data for the assessment, you want to remember to use in the name of the assessment of the file the indicator for the channel 1 active electrode. So this was C3 and C4, this was CZ and OZ and so forth. When you record these files, they will automatically create text documents in the same folder that have the same name but end with .epochs.txt. Those are the files we're actually going to use when we use um, the TLC7. When you open the TLC7, you're going to have a window that looks like this. Remember that there may be a couple of times that you have to click on a button when you open Excel to enable the material in the, um, in the software. Make sure you do that. So we get here and the first thing we do is click on the button called Assessment. And I would put the client's name, the trainer's name, and the client's age here. And then we come down to the bottom and we choose Quick Select. We no longer have to go through and manually enter each of these files. If we go to Quick Select, we can go to the folder that has the data in it. Notice that it doesn't show up here. And I click OK. When I do that, the TLC7 will automatically bring in the files and put them in the proper lines. You want to make, make sure you want to verify this is F3, this is C3 for central, FZ for midline, CZ for midline, T3 and P3. So they're all there. And then when we have them and we're pretty sure that we're, we're correct, we want to make sure that the artifact raw data is turned on and that we're using either two-channel or four-channel, depending on which type of uh, amplifier we used, we click on Process Data. When we process the data, the TLC will give us this window. This is the artifacting page of the TLC7. And it shows us a head for eyes closed, one for eyes open, and one for task. It also shows us what the targets were that were used for slow frequencies and fast frequencies to calculate the artifact. Below, we have a line for each of the files, each of the site pairs that we have a file for. This would include any uh, optional ones that we had used. And those will tell us that 95% of the data for eyes closed passed, 95% for eyes open, and 93% for task. Those pass in F3 and F4. But we can see looking up here that all of the sites for which we have data are green. That means that more than 50% passed. And so all we have to do to complete this assessment is come up here to continue with TLC assessment, click it, and it will go through the process of removing the artifact and opening the file so we can quickly look at it. We're going to also look at some options where we don't necessarily have all of these green in just a moment. You can see that the assessment shows up and all of the files are already created. So now we're going to try a second assessment. And this one is one in which we have all of the optional sites also gathered. Um, I collected this data, and so I was careful, and I know that it's good data. So I click on Process Data, and the TLC calculates and gives us the page. But now it's showing us that the temporal lobes with eyes closed and eyes open are being blocked by high frequency artifact and also here with eyes open FZ and PZ are, are being blocked by high frequency artifact. We do know that in the temporal lobes uh, and in the occipital lobes it's possible for a client if he lets his head hang forward in the occipital lobes or maintains tension in his jaw muscles in the temporal lobes that those can create muscle artifact, which we don't want to pass into the assessment. 
But in this case, I know that wasn't true because I was I had the client literally sitting with his mouth hanging open, so he couldn't tense his jaw muscles. So what I'm going to do is go to the T3 and T4 area, and I'm going to just select the button over here that says hide or unhide, and that will dr allow me to drill down into the data. We can see that we have a low frequency channel and a high frequency column, and those are all red indicating that something was blocking each one of these rows. If we look at the the uh, bold face type, we can see that it's almost always the fast wave channel that's blocking. So if I scroll down here, I can see that there are 30s, 40s, some 50s. Um, as I keep going down with eyes open, I see that there are some 40s. Generally, it looks like if we were to set the target at around 45, a lot of this would pass. In fact, we don't really see any large jumps. We don't see any 80s or 120s or anything like that in here. So it's very possible that we could set it even as high as 50 if we wanted to and probably not be taking an artifact but taking an actual activity. So I'm going to go up here to the high frequency threshold and I'll set it at 45. This is a general change, so this is going to affect everything in all of the files. But since these have already passed, um, the chances are that there isn't very much that is up around 40 or 50 in those other sites. So I'm not really going to be adding any bad data to those. I've changed this to 45. I click on Recalculate. and now I can see that everything except for T3 and T4 with eyes closed passed. If I scroll back up now so that I can look at the first 60 seconds of data here, I can see that there are some sites where I'm, I'm only 47%. I'm very, very close. So I could go through here and I could, for example, select this one, which is 45 and hold down my control key and select this, this, and this, this, maybe these two. And go through the first 60 seconds, just adding those things in, which are very, very close to the target that we set. And once I've done that, I can click on this button up here. All I've done was select the cells. When I click Edit, what happens? Those cells all turn black. I move those from artifacted or, or blocked by artifact to active part of the, uh, the file. So what I've really done is two things. I've changed the general value here, which allowed all of these to change. And I have also um, changed specific items in some sites that I wanted to look at. So now I will, um, I think I already have recalculated. I'll click on to continue with the assessment and we'll let the assessment open. So the assessment is drawn now, and I can go to the maps page, and here what I see is that there is a very hot temporal lobe, especially on the left, but both sides, and there's a hot cingulate. Those are two things which, if we had not had the data from the temporal lobes, we would never have seen them. And because I paid attention when we were gathering the data. I know that that was really there. I saw that the numbers were higher. I also saw that there was no surging. 
there were no all bars going way out and all coming back in at the same time, which is consistent of artifact. So the TLC assessment allows us to very quickly process a file where the data is good and it's clean, but it also allows us to make adjustments in places where we're sure that the data should be included, but it wasn't passed by the automatic. 